Hi everyone, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you. You're probably wondering, or you may have been wondering, why I've been a bit quiet. And that's because lots of you have been saying in the comments that you would like to see how some of the CPUs perform on X370. So what I've done is I've taken what's just arrived, which is the 3600X, I've added the 3700X in as well, and I've retested, or I've tested them on the X370, the X470, and the X570 Prime. Now you're probably wondering why I use the Asus board, but it was because I actually have a full set of the 3, 4, and 570 boards, so it means I can do a really nice, tidy side-by-side -side comparison. The reason why I've also done the 36 and the 3700X is the, the 30, X370 was obviously designed for uh, an 8-core CPU, so we stuck with that. And then we wanted to see whether it could cope with the new CPUs, if there were any performance limitations, and just to see if it would be a good idea for one of you with the older boards to possibly upgrade to one of the newer CPUs and whether it might be worth it. So I'm going to dive straight in because at the end of the day we know that the X370 boards do technically support the new Ryzen 3000 series processors. Now the 3600X, uh, what I will say about the graphs is we have done some standalone 3600X graphs to fit in with our normal CPU review stuff. But then we've also done some funky graphs where we've just done the uh, AMD board side by side. So it's kind of an AMD focus point there, and you can pick through to see you know, where yours might fit. Now, the only reason why I use the Asus board is I had a full set. Amazingly, a lot of you think that when stuff turns up, it just stays, but a lot of the manufacturers do actually rotate the samples. So this is one of the few options that I actually had. Now, I did have a few other Asus options that I could have done, but I stuck with the low end one. So I went with a Prime, uh, so that we could go for a worst case scenario. So if you've got a slightly higher end board, then you're probably not going to run into some of the issues uh, with like VRMs and the like. Now with the Prime X370, what I will say is the VRMs on it weren't that great. And just to give you a little bit of background, the reason for that was when the original Ryzen um, uh, engineering samples went out to the vendors, they weren't actually that good. Um, the ones that came out for retail and for reviewers were so much better. There was like a 35% increase in performance. But because of that, with X370, a lot of the vendors didn't really give it any focus because at that present moment, they didn't think by the engineering samples that they were going to be that great. So a lot of the really early X370 boards were exactly that. They weren't that great because they didn't think that they were going to sell. Now, when the later ones come out, things did get better. But the X470 boards were where things changed dramatically because they knew that they had a reasonable platform that was worth spending a little bit of time on. Now, with the X370, back in the day of uh, the 1000 series and the 2000 series, one of the things that we did have issues with was memory. And when you go to Ryzen 3000 with putting it in the X370, we sadly still had the same problems. And that was, we were struggling to get 3200 megahertz memory running. It was possible, but it was kind of, it was a little bit more in depth than you would be if you were to be on X570, for example. So the CPU is the same, but the memory, you know, getting memory running was more difficult. With the CPUs, we have been able to have them running at 4600 megahertz. But just switching them to the other board, meant that we then were having problems even getting 3200 megahertz running. So what I will say straight away, and don't worry, we will get to performance data. I'm literally just trying to give you as much information as I possibly can do, and I know it's quite verbal, but if you're on X370, you may run uh, into some issues trying to get quick memory running. It's gonna be a 3000 megahertz, 3200 megahertz possible if you're lucky. But if you're looking to do an upgrade and you've already got the memory, then you haven't got anything to worry about. But I'm just letting you know, so if you're thinking to yourself, I'll keep my motherboard, I'll buy a processor, 
and I'll buy some memory and I'm going to go up to say 3600 megahertz for example that's not going to be possible at least with the testing that I've done on this uh, board specifically you may find there are some instances uh, with other manufacturers or slight, uh, a slightly higher end boards that you might get lucky but I'd say as a rule of thumb to keep it kind of under wraps because with the uh, X470 Pro it was completely different. We didn't quite manage to get 4400 megahertz running but you were looking at 4000 megahertz quite easy. So you know just to give you an idea now that does fall into place with what AMD told us when the X470 boards were released. Now AMD said across the board memory performance would be considerably better with the x470 platform because they put some changes in place with the vendors to make memory performance better and that kind of did follow suit with the the testing that we did see now one we, we act like i said we do have a lot of graphs uh but it's just the uh like i said we we've done two lots of uh testing so or two lots of graphs so you've got the normal cpu graph that we can pop up with this vegas one for example now this vegas is one of our custom runs it's actually a video that i made a long time ago and we're using it because it's got quite a few layers in it and it's just our own custom one now all of the cpus have been running the same way because we've actually tested these just for the uh, ryzen 3000 launch so you can see it fits in kind of nicely. Now I will get to very specific 3600X uh, comparisons in the uh, conclusion and we can break it down like that. But I did want to make this video more 370, 470, kind of focused. So we'll pop that graph up. Now, what you can see here is it's actually a fairly healthy mix because it all kind of mixes around and about obviously shorter is going to be better and the the overclock is really where things kind of start to separate out but with vegas specifically it didn't really make a huge amount of difference which was kind of nice and really the only place where you're going to see any uh, big differences are very hardcore memory focused benchmark in the grand scheme of things, in the real world, it, you're not going to notice too much of a difference. Uh, even when you come, uh, we'll f put the gaming up, for example, you can have a look through these. And obviously you've got the 3700X at the top of the graph because it's got more cores and it, 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 uh, it fares a little bit better. But the actual 3600X and what board it's on it didn't really make a great deal of difference. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be very kind of like gaming focused at this price point rather than being like content creating focused. But even if you go on to like very hardcore content creation stuff with Cinebench, for example, there is no clear motherboard winner, which is actually a really nice thing. And also, when you look at uh, hard drive performance, surprisingly, we did get PCR Express 4 speeds with our gigabyte drive running at the 4,900, 4,200 megabytes a second. And we did get those numbers with X370 as well. Now with X370 and PCR Express 4 drives, what I do need to stress is it's going to depend where the M.2 is connected to. Because some of the M.2s, if you've got multiple M.2s on the board, then you're, one of them was probably going to be wired into the chipset itself rather than direct to the CPU. And you do need to have the M.2 direct into the CPU because it's the CPU with the PCR Express 4 capabilities. That's the bit that you need to remember. And if it's indirect into the CPU, then you should get good numbers. There are a few minor uh, boards out there that just won't work with PCR Express 4 at all and I would look into that directly with the manufacturer. People always ask me underneath but all I have to do nine times out of ten is do what you can do and that's just go to the manufacturer and Google and look for the spec charts. But you can look for block diagrams if you've got the board already in your manual and it will show you where the M.2 is wired into. And uh, if it's wired into the CPU, you're going to be lucky, you're going to be happy. For those very few out of there that it's wired into the chipset, you will not get the full speed of the PCI Express 4. Um, 
But other than that, the difference between the boards is really the build quality. So the, the original X370 boards, like I said, they weren't a massive focus. They didn't think that they were going to sell. And that's not me saying it. That's not me being an Intel fanboy. That's not me trying to cause an argument. That's just a matter of fact. But as they go up, they did get better. So for argument's sake, the X570 boards, the reason why they're so expensive is they are considerably better because they wanted all the PCI Express 4 signals and everything to be really strong. They've got more lanes, they've got more copper. There's a lot more components on them, but that meant they were also much more expensive. But that's the reason why I made this video. And that is the fact that if you've got an X370 board and you're lucky enough to have the M.2 wired into the CPU, you can pop yourself a 3000 series processor in. You'll get nigh on the same performance. Memory won't get any better to what you did with the CPU that you had before, or at least not as much as you would do if you had one of the newer boards. But the main point is you can pop the CPU in, you'll get incredibly good uh, performance bar the memory, and you'll still be able to buy yourself a PCI Express 4 drive and run all those quick speeds and have a really snappy operating system. Now don't forget there are more graphs on the OC3D website. There are a lot more graphs. It's like 34 pages in total and I think 32 of them are graphs. So there's a lot of them. We've done a graph for specific CPUs. We've done a graph for just the X370, 570, 470 difference. Um, a lot of the better X370 boards will still probably be able to cope with the 3700X because it is the low power 8 core. So you shouldn't run into too many issues or anything like that. Um, uh, so beyond that, just go a little bit careful with your VRM temps when you first build the rig. But as long as you've got heat sinks on the board and it is one of the better boards and not one of the small ones with just like four phases and stuff like that, you should actually be perfectly fine. With the 3600X, the bulk of the boards from the X370 up will be absolutely fine as well. Just remember though, that if you are upgrading your CPU, maybe it's time to give your rig a clean. Maybe it's time to think to yourself, could I get a slightly better cooler? Because if you get a slightly better cooler, even if you've got a CPU that should run technically better, my point would be that you can have a slightly better, quieter gaming experience at the same time. So. If you want to just upgrade the CPU, that's fine, but maybe look at a couple of other options. But the other really random thing is, is even if you do have one of these, you can still go PCI Express 4 drives. And the other thing is, this gaming performance, as we've already seen, is pretty much on par as well. So if you're looking and wondering, should you upgrade, uh, well, CPU at least, the answer is pretty much, there's a few minor caveats, but the answer pretty much is, Yes, and you shouldn't run into too many issues. The only thing I will do before I close is if you've got a, the kit already, before you buy an eCPU, make sure you update the BIOS. If you update the BIOS, then you, when you drop the new CPU in, it will run straight away. And that's the only thing you need to think about. Also, if you're gonna buy an X370 board, it's a cheap way to get in on the Ryzen 3000 um, set it, you know, set up, and that's the, you know, you're going to buy a second hand board and then buy a processor like the 3600X. Then, cool, but you are going to need to make sure that it's running the, mo the most recent uh, BIOS. AMD are doing this little kit thing where you can pay a deposit and they'll send you a really basic CPU so that you can flash the BIOS and that sort of thing, but it's a lot of faff. Uh, Asus boards, some of them do come with BIOS flashback, so you can pop a USB in and you don't have to uh, have a CPU in it to be able to do the BIOS. Now that is very handy for this kind of scenario. Just need to make sure the uh, coding on the uh, CPU is actually correct though, because the naming of it has to be exact and it's not the name that comes off the ASUS website. If you open the driver CD, there is a BIOS file in it and it will, have a, it will be called something cap. That is actually the correct name. So if you download another BIOS file, change it to that name, that's what you need for BIOS flashback for the uh, ASUS boards. But lots of graphs have obviously gone up to the side for you to peruse, for you to kind of pick apart. If you need any more data, you can go to the OC3D website. 
Hopefully this has been um, of help to you because we've done basically six reviews worth of work to put this together to get the numbers so that you now know whether you should be buying a uh, 3000 series processor if you're on an X370 board. So I'd love to hear your comments underneath. Please like, share, subscribe and all that stuff if you found the video useful. We have a lot more motherboard reviews for you coming up and amazingly my first Navi aftermarket GPU has just arrived. So at some point next week, I'll have another review for you. For now at least, this is the tiniest one out.